For all my previous games, I used a game engine. While game engines are great, uh, and are a great way to make a game, I want to build upon my programming skills. Even though there is programming in the game engines, um, for example Unity via C Sharp and Godot via v GeoDescript, the problem is that this only teaches you how to make a game and code in that specific engine. This is where a graphics library comes in. A graphics library is a type of library that handles basic game functions like rendering and input. Other high-level stuff are left for you to make. I've made a few prototypes using a framework before, but that's only using Pygame and Python. However, I'm currently learning C++, a low-level language that is used for many games. In this video, I will cover how I made a game in C++ with SDL2 for the Brachius Community Game Jam. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. To install SDL, you have to use the standard Visual Studio library tools. First, I downloaded the file for SDL2. Next, I added a library into the Visual Studio using this additional library. Uh, next, I selected x64 because in this day and age, most people own a 64-bit computer. Now, I was ready to create the window. This is the time lapse of what happened in the next four days. Did you see an actual game? Or any real progress? That's because there wasn't any. Whilst I did learn a lot of things from the library, I didn't manage to actually add any features in this four days. At this point, I was feeling ready to give up. Then I found this video series by Avery Makes Games about m remaking retro games in SDL2. Check, him check his channel out, he really saved this game jam for me. I then realised I have never made a Pong clone before. Usually the first game you should make is a Pong remake. I also had not made a Breakout clone before. I decided to combine the two games, but the bricks are changing positions every frame. The theme of the game jam was Let There Be Chaos, so this would slightly fit into the theme at least. In SDL, checking for collision is actually pretty simple. All you need to do is enter this line of code to check if two rects are touching each other. A rect is basically just a rectangle, and they are used for rendering shapes and images, it's quite useful. It is very easy to render rects to the screen. This single line of code is all you need, as well as clearing and presenting the renderer. So input in SDL needs an event variable. I created a while loop about polling the event, then I created an if statement that if the W key is pressed, the left paddle moves up and vice versa with the S key. So the other paddle was controlled using the arrow keys. So I did this by moving the Y variable in each paddle rect. So to make the ball bounce, I had a velocity X variable and a velocity Y variable. Then when the ball touches the walls, the velocity variable becomes negative. Then I used maths to bounce the ball off the paddle depending on where it hits on. I then added the velocity to the ball position, and then this was the effect. So this is technically the traditional Pong game. So now I'll add the bricks. So I used a built-in random function in C++ to create a random position for each of the blocks. This is how one of those looks like. So the srand variable at the top makes sure that a new number is generated every single time. I then assigned this position to, to the new rect of each of the blocks. I also rendered them in a different color to the rest of the game objects. Next, I added an if statement. It checks if the ball and an object are colliding. If they are, the ball bounces off the brick and the brick disappears. To make it disappear, I just changed the width and height to zero because I couldn't think of how to make it go away. So this is how it looked so far. So where is the fun in a game if there is no lose state? For this reason, I tried to come up with a game over mechanic. To do this, I, I decided to add a death brick. When the player collides with a death brick, it is game over. 
Rendering a dev brick is the same as the other bricks. I put it into the render function. For the dev brick though, I decided to give it a new color. So, so as you can see, I didn't put too much thought into the color for the dev brick. Anyway, the dev brick acts as any other brick in terms of the position. However, when the player touches the dev brick, the bull disappears, and so does the dev brick. A game over boolean is then set to true, which will come apparent later on. And so here is the game so far, and it is almost finished actually. Sound effects are a very important part of the game, however. To make the sound effects for this game, I used SFXR, a free tool for making sound effects. It was made for the Ludendare game jam originally. So I then downloaded the SDL mixer library to add the sound effects into the game, because SDL does not come packed with a sound loading function. I then loaded the .wav files and played them into an audio channel. There are 8 audio channels, as well as a music one. If you set the channel in the code to minus one, then that will play the audio in the first channel available. This is how the sound effects sound in game. All right, almost done. So now I need to create a menu. To do this, I added a new loop next to the game loop and set the is running to false. So in this loop, if any key is pressed, the game begins. I also tried adding an image and it worked, but what is this monstrosity? Anyway, the menu works as you can see in this video. I also have to add a win state. To do this, I have a score variable, and it increases by 1 each time the player collides with a brick. When the score is 6, the victory text appears, and the ball disappears. This actually allows the game to have an objective. So this is a demonstration of the mechanic. So because I was busy on the last day, I only had 6 days to make this game. I did not have much time, so the game did not have a logo, and the game page looks like this. After setting up the page, and answering the questions, I submitted the game. So, do you remember when I said this? I selected X64, because in this day and age, most people own a 64-bit computer. Well, it turns out that people cannot play my game because of this. I definitely learned that I will compile for x86 next time I make a game with C++. So, in the end, I learned a lot from this game jam. Even though the game is not too good and isn't too completed, I learned an entire framework and I learned more about C++. The source code of this project is available in the description if you are interested. I seriously recommend this challenge to anyone thinking of doing it. It is a great way to increase programming skills and to just learn new stuff. So anyway, the game and source code are in the description, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and bye.